The General Jewish Labor Bund in Lithuania, Poland and Russia Yiddish, Albmayana Yiddisha Arbeiter Bund und Litpolen Wayne Rusland Algemeiner Yiddisha Arbeiter Bund in Lita, Poln UN Rusland, generally called the Bund Yiddish, Bund cognate to German, Bund, meaning federation or union or the Jewish Labor Bund, was a secular Jewish socialist party in the Russian Empire, active between 1897 and 1920. In 1917 the Polish part of the Bund, which dated to the times when Poland was a Russian territory, seceded from the Russian Bund and created a new Polish General Labour Bund which continued to operate in Poland in the years between the two world wars. The Russian Bund was dissolved in 1920 and incorporated into the Communist Party. Other remnants of the Bund endured in various countries. A member of the Bund was called a Bundist. Topic. Founding The «General Jewish Labor Bund in Russia and Poland» was founded in Vilnius on October 7, 1897. The name was inspired by the General German Workers' Association. The Bund sought to unite all Jewish workers in the Russian Empire into a united socialist party, and also to ally itself with the wider Russian social democratic movement to achieve a democratic and socialist Russia. The Russian Empire then included Lithuania, Latvia, Belarus, Ukraine and most of present-day Poland, areas where the majority of the world's Jews then lived. They hoped to see the Jews achieve a legal minority status in Russia. Of all Jewish political parties of the time, the Bund was the most progressive regarding gender equality, with women making up more than one third of all members. In 1901, the word Lithuania was added to the name of the party. During the period of 1903 1904, the Bund was harshly affected by Tsarist state repression. Between June 1903 and July 1904, 4,467 Bundists were arrested and jailed. As part of the Russian social democracy Given the Bund's secular and socialist perspective, it opposed what it viewed as the reactionary nature of traditional Jewish life in Russia. Created before the Russian Social Democratic Labour Party RSDLP, the Bund was a founding collective member at the RSDLP's first Congress in Minsk in March 1898. For the next five years, the Bund was recognized as the sole representative of the Jewish workers in the RSDLP, although many Russian socialists of Jewish descent, especially outside of the Pale of Settlement, joined the RSDLP directly. At the RSDLP's Second Congress in Brussels and London in August 1903, the Bund's autonomous position within the RSDLP was rejected under pressure by the Bolsheviks and the Bund's representatives left the Congress, the first of many splits in the Russian Social Democratic movement in the years to come. The five representatives of the Bund at this Congress were Vladimir Kosovsky, Arkady Kramer, Mikhail Leiber, Vladimir Medem, and Noah Portnoy. The Bund formally rejoined the RSDLP when all of its faction reunited at the Fourth Unification Congress in Stockholm in April 1906, with the support of the Mensheviks, but the RSDLP remained fractured along ideological and ethnic lines. The Bund generally sided with the party's Menshevik faction led by Julius Martov and against the Bolshevik faction led by Vladimir Lenin during the factional struggles in the run-up to the Russian Revolution of 1917. Fifth Congress The Fifth Congress of the Bund met in Zurich in June 1903. Thirty delegates took part in the proceedings, representing the major city branches of the party and the Foreign Committee. Two issues dominated the debates, the upcoming Congress of the RSDLP and the National Question. During the debates there was a division between the older guard of the Foreign Committee Kosovsky, Kramer and John Yosef Mill and the younger generation represented by Medem, Leiber and Raphael Abramovich. The younger group wanted to stress the Jewish national character of the party. In the end no compromise could be reached, and no resolution was adopted on the national question. Topic: 1905 revolution and its aftermath 
In the Polish areas of the Empire, the Bund was a leading force in the 1905 revolution. During the following years, the Bund went into a period of decay. The party tried to concentrate on labor activism around 1909–1910 and led strikes in ten cities. The strikes resulted in a deepened backlash for the party, and as of 1910 there were legal Bundist trade unions in only four cities, Białystok, Vilnius, Riga and Łódź. Total membership in Bundist unions was around 1,500. At the time of the eight-party conference only nine local branches were represented Riga, Vilnius, Białystok, Łódź, Bobrusk, Pinsk, Warsaw, Grodno and Vansk with a combined membership of 609 out of whom 404 were active. After the RSDLP finally split in 1912, the Bund became a federated part of the Russian Social Democratic Labour Party Menshevik. by this time the Mensheviks had accepted the idea of a federated party organization. Topic. Parliamentary representation At the 1906 First Duma elections, the Bund made an electoral agreement with the Lithuanian Labourers' Party Trudoviks, which resulted in the election to the Duma of two apparently non candidates supported by the Bund, Dr. Shmeriahu Levin for the Vilnius province and Leon Bramson for the Kaunas province. In total, there were 12 Jewish deputies in the Duma, falling to three in the Second Duma (February 1907 to June 1907), two in the Third Duma (1907 to 1912), and again three in the Fourth, elected in 1912. None of them being affiliated to the Bund. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Political outlook. The Bund eventually came to strongly oppose Zionism, arguing that emigration to Palestine was a form of escapism. The Bund did not advocate separatism. Instead, it focused on culture, rather than a state or a place, as the glue of Jewish nationalism. In this they borrowed extensively from the Austro-Marxist school, further alienating the Bolsheviks and Lenin. The Bund also promoted the use of Yiddish as a Jewish national language and to some extent opposed the Zionist project of reviving Hebrew. The Bund won converts mainly among Jewish artisans and workers, but also among the growing Jewish intelligentsia. It led a trade union movement of its own. It joined with the Pole Zion Labor Zionists and other groups to form self defense organizations to protect Jewish communities against pogroms and government troops. During the Russian Revolution of 1905 the Bund headed the revolutionary movement in the Jewish towns, particularly in Belarus and Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> Activities abroad Less than a year after the founding of the party, its foreign committee was set up in Geneva. Also within the same time span, Bundist groups began to constitute themselves internationally. However, the Bund did not construct any world party as did Pole Zion. On the contrary, the Bund argued that it was a party for action inside the Russian Empire. The Bundist groups abroad were not included into the party structures. In 1902, a united organization of workers' associations and support groups to the Bund abroad was founded. The groups affiliated to the United Organization played an important role in raising funds for the party. Between 1901 to 1903, the Foreign Committee was based in London. The United Organization, the Foreign Committee, as well as the Union of Russian Social Democrats abroad, were all dissolved at the time of the Russian Revolution of 1917. Topic: <laughs> Separation of the Polish Bund. When Poland fell under German occupation in 1914, contact between the Bundists in Poland and the party center in St. Petersburg became difficult. In November 1914 the Bund Central Committee appointed a separate committee of Bund organizations in Poland to run the party in Poland. Theoretically the Bundists in Poland and Russia were members of the same party, but in practice the Polish Bundists operated as a party of their own. In December 1917 the split was formalized, as the Polish Bundists held a clandestine meeting in Lublin and reconstituted themselves as a separate political party. Topic. 
1917 The Bund was the only Jewish party that worked within the Soviets. Like other socialist parties in Russia, the Bund welcomed the February Revolution of 1917, but it did not support the October Revolution in which the Bolsheviks seized power. Like Mensheviks and other non-Bolshevik parties, the Bund called for the convening of the Russian Constituent Assembly long demanded by all social democratic factions. The Bund's key leader in Petrograd during these months was Mikhail Leiber, who was to be roundly denounced by Lenin. With the Russian Civil War and the increase in anti-Semitic pogroms by nationalists and whites, the Bund was obliged to recognize the Soviet government and its militants fought in the Red Army in large numbers. At the time of the 1917 upheavals, Mikhail Leiber was elected president of the Bund. In May 1917, a new Central Committee of the Bund was formed, consisting of Goldman, Ehrlich, Medem and Jeremiah Weinstein. One Central Committee member, Medem, was in Poland at the time and couldn't travel to St. Petersburg to meet with the rest of the committee. Four Bund bureaus were represented as such among the 60 delegates to the May 1918 Menshevik Party Conference Moscow, Abramovich, Northern, Ehrlich, Western, Goldstein, Melamed, and Occupied Lands. Eisenstadt. The political changes at the time of the Russian Revolution resulted in splits in the Bund. In Ukraine, Bund branches in cities like Bobrusk, Ekaterinoburg and Odessa had formed left-wing Bund groups in late 1918. In February 1919 these groups representing the majority in the Bund in Ukraine adopted the name Communist Bund Kombund, reconstituting themselves as an independent party. Moise Rafes, who had been a leading figure of the Bund in Ukraine, became the leader of the Ukrainian Kombund. The Communist Bund supported the Soviet side in the Russian Civil War. Other members of the Bund representing the minority in the Bund in Ukraine at the end of 1918 formed the Social Democratic Bund, Bund SD. Leaders of the Ukrainian Social Democratic Bund, Saw Fox, A. Litvak, David Petrovsky Lipitz, openly opposed the communist ideology and policy of confiscation of property, usurpation of political power, arrests and persecution of political opponents. The Bund also had elected officials at the local level. During the 1917 October Revolution and Russian Civil War, the mayor of the predominantly Jewish Ukrainian town of Berdachev 53,728 inhabitants, 80% of whom were Jewish at the 1897 census was a Bundist, David Petrovsky Lipitz. <laughs> Final split at the Gomel Conference The remainder Bund in Russia held a conference, the 12th conference of the Bund on April 12 to 19, 1920 in Gomel, where the party was split into two separate parties, the majority Communist Bund, Kombund, and the minority Social Democratic Bund. The 14 point of the resolution, on the present situation and the tasks of our party, stated that summing up the experience of the last year, the 12th conference of the Bund finds that the Bund, in principle, had adopted the Communist platform since the 11th Conference. That the program of the Communist Party, which is also the program of the Soviet government, corresponds with the fundamental platform of the Bund. That a united socialist front with principled opponents of Soviet power, who draw a line between the proletariat and its government, is impossible. That the moment has come when the Bund can relinquish its official oppositional stand and take upon itself responsibility for the Soviet government's policy. The resolution on organizational questions stated that The logical consequence of the political stand adopted by the Bund is the latter's entry into the RCP on the same basis as the Bund's membership of the RSDLP. The conference authorized the CC of the Bund to see to it, as an essential condition, that the Bund preserve within the RCP the status of an autonomous organization of the Jewish proletariat. <laughs> Legacy In 1921, the Communist Bund dissolved itself and its members sought admission to the Communist Party. As of 1923, the last Bundist groups had ceased to function in Soviet Russia. Many former Bundists, like Mikhail Leiber and David Petrovsky, perished during Stalin's purges in the 1930s. 
the Polish Bundists continued their activities until 1948. During the latter half of the 20th century the Bundist legacy was represented through the International Jewish Labor Bund, a federation of local Bundist groups around the world. <laughs> Former Bundists who became high-level officials in the USSR Israel Moisevich Leplevsky (1894–1938), Bundist in 1904–1907, Minister, People's Commissar of Internal Affairs of the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic (1937–1938). Moise Leibovitz Ruimovich (1889–1939), Bundist in 1904–1913, Minister, People's Commissar. For military affairs of the Donetsk Krivoy Rog Soviet Republic (1917–1918) and Minister, People's Commissar for Defense Industry of the USSR (1936–1937). David Petrovsky (1886–1937), Bundist in 1902–1919, a Chief of the General Directorate of Military Educational Institutions (GUVUZ) of the Red Army (1920–1924), a member of the Presidium of the Executive Committee of the Communist International (1924–1929), a member of the Presidium to the Supreme Soviet of the National Economy (1929–1932), a Chief of the Department of Higher and Secondary Technical Educational Institutions (GLAVVTUZ) in the Ministry (People's Commissariat of Soviet Heavy Industry, 1932 to 1937. Topic: The Bundists in North America. Among the exiled Bundists who went on with socialist politics in America was Baruch Charney Vladek (1886–1938), elected to the New York Board of Aldermen as a socialist in 1917, defeated in 1921 but re-elected in 1937 to the newly formed New York City Council, running on the American Labor Party ticket. He was also the manager of the Jewish Daily Forward from 1918 till his death. Moshe Lewis (1888–1950) was a Bundist leader in his Polish (now Belarusian) hometown Svislosh before he emigrated to Canada in 1922. He was the father of David Lewis (1909–1981), a leader of the New Democratic Party in Canada. The American labor leader David Dubinsky (1892–1982), though never formally a member of the party, had joined the Bakers Union, which was controlled by the Bund, and was elected assistant secretary within the union by 1906. He made his way to the United States in 1911. He later became a member of the Socialist Party of America, helped found the American Labor Party in 1936 and was from 1932 till 1966 the leader of the International Ladies' Garment Workers' Union, between 1913 and 1917, working under the name Max Goldfarb. David Petrovsky was a member of the Central Committee of the Jewish Socialist Federation of America, a member of the Socialist Party of America, and the editor of The Forward. Topic Footnotes Topic Further reading Jack Jacobs, ed. Jewish Politics in Eastern Europe, The Bund at One Hundred. New York, New York University Press, two thousand and one. Alfred Katz, Bund, The Jewish Socialist Labour Party. The Polish Review, Vol. 10, No. 3 Summer 1965, pp. 67–74. Molly Crabapple, "'My Great Grandfather the Bundist", New York Review of Books, 6 October 2018. <laughs> External links Bund article at the YIVO Encyclopedia of Jews in Eastern Europe Algemeiner Yiddische Arbeiter Bund collection at the International Institute of Social History Artist Molly Crabapple on her great-great-grandfather, the Bundist and artist Sam Rothbard